This is the Rock Ag Podcast. I'm your host, Garrett Coffey, Ag and Natural Resource Agent for the University of Kentucky in Rock Castle County. Today we'll be joined by Dr. Bob Coleman, Extension Equine Specialist for the University of Kentucky. We'll be discussing hauling your equine partner, how to travel safely, and many helpful tips as we travel down the road. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Bob. Well, thanks for the invitation, Garrett. As we go into the fall season, one of my favorite things to do is travel with my horses. Uh, I love to go see fall foliage and camp out. and So I thought it would be a good time to talk about traveling with horses and maybe some pointers and tips and maybe debunk some myths and see what's marketing and what's really needed and some, some aspects that we have. So if we start to talk about hauling our horses, let's start with the trailer. And uh, let's get that out of the way before we ever load the horse up. We, there's so many different types of trailers, loads, different things, but I think there's a few things that are important. And one is, is that we're going to talk about, let's set this trailer level as, as we can with the truck and not have it pitched up in the nose. What do you think about that? That is such a important thing. And You know, when you drive, and it's interesting in Kentucky, I don't think you can drive anywhere in Kentucky for more than about 30 minutes and not see a horse trip. That's great. And yet, when we see them, yeah, the the nose is up in the air, and and you have to think about that poor horse is riding uphill wherever you're going because you haven't given him the, the, the proper footing to be able to stand comfortably. He's already working hard standing in the trailer and now we've just added to it plus the other thing is that what's that doing to your back tires on that you know double axle trailer i mean absolutely all those things and and so i think a lot of times and i i don't think it matters whether it's a gooseneck or it's a bumper pull Uh, when you get your trailer you need to show up with your truck and let the people that know how to do it put the hitches together make sure that it you know, as level as it might not be dead level, but boy, there's some of them, they're not even close to thinking about level, let alone anything else. So that, and, and I think you also, you know, make sure that you got your hitch right. I, I see a lot that have those low leveler hitches and, and nobody told them how to use it. Yeah. So, so you look at it and you think here you have the perfect way to get this trailer right. And you haven't. Um, so yeah just spend some time because that really is it is really important as you said earlier you know all the other things is are kind of we believe them to be important but we miss out on the thing that i think is probably the most important yeah for sure when we talk about the trailer the flooring is something that I see that, you know, if you look at any kind of horse trailers, there's wood, there's aluminum, there's rubber floors, there's rubber mats, there's all kinds of stuff that we can put in there. And, and let's talk about the floor and then talk, touch on, let's think about putting some shavings down, some kind of bedding in that trailer on top of what we have there and talk on that just a little bit. Well, I, you know, the, the floor, and in a lot of times we just don't spend enough time making sure that it's sound. Uh, you know, if it's a, a steel floor or an aluminum floor, that might be a little more, you know, have a little more slip to it, a little harder for the horses to stand on it. For sure, we're, we're going to have to put something so that they can stand comfortably and tolerate our driving. So, but if we put rubber mats down or even a wooden floor, I mean, you still got to go through and check it. When you clean it out, make sure that it dries out, make sure that it stays sound. Uh, There are some really interesting products now that you can actually, they're kind of a pour on rubber and they seal everything up. Uh, They have uh, some pretty good reports about them. They're they're pretty good for the horses to stand on. Uh, I always think that when we look at that or rubber mats, uh, what weight are we adding to the trailer? Because all of a sudden that's, you know, we're going to buy the trailer if it doesn't have those mats in it and it hasn't had its gross vehicle weight done with the mats in it, that's going to change. So all of a sudden, 
we could add a little more weight to our trailer and we need to appreciate that based on what we're pulling it with. So I think, you know, something that gives the horse some cushion, uh, gives him some ability to stand comfortably and again, deal with going down the road because it's, you know, not exactly the easiest job that they have. And some kind of bedding, something that's maybe going to, again, give them some cushion, uh, help them deal with the uh, vibrations of the road, because uh, that, that's going to be there. I think we tend to forget that because we're sitting in our air-conditioned cab with our comfortable seat and our lumbar support, and old Nelly's in the back trying to stand up on something that's a little slippery. So give them some comfort, give them some cushion. Uh, it doesn't have to be bedded deep. We know that uh, when the trailer's moving, most horses, not all, but most uh, aren't going to urinate. They're, they're going to wait till the trailer's not moving for that to happen. And in some cases, there are some horses that uh, it would have to be a pretty long trailer ride because they just won't urinate in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's always embarrassing if you have one that does and you're parked in the gas station fueling up and that's when they decide that it's a safe time to go. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing, but uh, yeah. a little bit of bedding, something that let, let's not have it too deep, uh, deep enough and, and then realize that you've got to clean it out after you're done. Yeah. So one thing that I think that would probably be important and it will kind of lead into our next topic is the ventilation in a trailer is I think that we, if it's my understanding, we need to have ventilation in that trailer, no matter what the temperature is outside, because it's going to get stuffy in there if you've got it completely sealed up and locked up. But then also, you know, how much is too much? How much is not enough on that? There's probably an opportunity to have too much. Um, I think the way trailers are built, that's most likely not going to happen. Yeah. You know, if you look at some of those trailers, the, uh, you know, those half top trailers, yeah. So they, they, you know, they got a lot of ventilation. Um, those horses and cattle that travel in those seem to come through just fine. Uh, they're they're protected from the direct velocity of the wind, but good ventilation. I think you know we tend to to put ourselves into what we think the climate in the trailer is. So I don't want it really windy and cold because I'll I'll get cold. But you know those trailers don't have a lot of square footage and a lot of space you put a couple of you know two or three horses in in a three or four horse trailer <clears throat> that's a, a lot of heat load uh, they're going to warm that trailer up quickly and they're also perspiring so they're going to increase uh, the water content in the air humidity is going to go up so you want to have air leaving uh, so those oh, you know roof vents need to be open the windows need to be open uh, get as much air moving through. You might moderate it a little bit in really cold temperatures, but I don't think you shut it up completely because it will be warm in there. And as you said, it will get stuffy. So uh, having it so that the air comes through, uh, maybe not drafting, but uh, that horses, you know, and you do see people going down the road with uh, windows open on the side of the trailers and horses heads hanging out, just <laughs> like dogs going in. Yeah. And I, I don't think you want to do that because I just cannot imagine having a, a grasshopper hit me in the face, face at 65 <laughs> miles an hour. I mean, that's got to hurt. Absolutely. So don't let them, you know, you, they can put their heads out when you stop, but I don't think they should have their heads out when they're going. So, you know, you can buy trailers that have screens. Yeah. Um, just to, to, I mean, it's a protection for the horse, but. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, we worry about it probably more when it's cold than when it's hot. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't want them to get cold. And, and I see lots of horses go on trailers with, you know, blankets and all sorts of things. And it's like, mm. it's going to be warm in there. You might not want to do that. On the other hand, I think sometimes we forget about the heat because we're driving in our air conditioned truck. Yeah. We're comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but old Nelly's in the back of the trailer and it's, you know, it's 95 degrees outside. So is she getting enough air? 
you know, is there, is, are we doing enough to keep that environment positive or as pleasant for her as we possibly can? And so cracking them open, that's why I think, you know, stock trailers are really good because they move air. And, and if you look at the animals that are traveling in stock trailers, they tend to be pretty comfortable. Yeah. So that kind of leads me into, I mean, what's too hot to haul a horse? What's too cold to haul a horse? You know, where, where are we going to make that breaking point that we need to start thinking about, you know, maybe trying to put off a trip or travel at a different time or whatever? I think, you know, in some of the weather that we've seen from here and going west this summer, you know, when we've had those heat advisories and you know, through Oklahoma and like, well, all across the West, they've had a lot of times where there's been heat advisories because it's been hot and humid. So yeah, you know, we don't want to be traveling during the middle of the heat of the day. So, you know, when it, when there's a heat advisory for us, I would think that that would be a very good time for me to say, I need to pick a different time of the day to go. Mm -hmm. I need to be very careful if I have to go for whatever reason, there's sometimes you know, you, you just, you got to go because you got to go. <clears throat> uh, if I have to stop, I want to make sure I stop in a place where there's good airflow in the trailer. Uh, try to, to reduce any of the, you know, thermal load from the sun if I can. But I'm probably, if I have to haul when it's a hot day, uh, try to go really early in the morning or later in the day. When, once it started to cool off, and it might mean, a little toughness on us, but we might have to drive late into the night. Yeah. Uh, we might have to drive all night because it's a better time to haul horses just because of the temperature. And the other thing, if you think about it, if you're making a long trip, going at night generally you have less traffic. Yeah. For so, sure. so it's a lot easier on the overall trip. Yeah, it's hard for you to stay up all that that late, but not really. I mean, if you prepare for it, then I know a number of people that, that if they're going, you know, haul into a horse show or haul into something where they're going to go ride, they actually will travel at night just because of the, the temperature and the traffic. Yeah, for sure. On the other side, too cold. Because we can close that trailer up and we can put a blanket on them, we can probably get away with some pretty cool temperatures as long as it's safe for you to be out driving uh, yeah. but probably the the heat would be the the fact the environmental factor that i would be more concerned about okay so you were talking about driving all night let's talk about the duration that we can haul a horse <laughs> you know what's what's the rule of just a rule of thumb that we're going to be hauling too long you know how often do we need to stop if we're hauling a long distance that kind of stuff well, I mean, depending on if it's you personally, there's some of those rules and regulations of the road that may come into to play. They just got uh, an extension put on until November. Yeah. Uh, so that we do have a little more hours of service. And part of that is because of the welfare of the commodity that we have in the trailer. Right. So we can go a little longer, but they're typically talking 11 or 12, maybe 13 hours total time on the trailer uh, for a lot of horses that are going say from here to Florida that's about what the, the trip tends to be mm -hmm. uh, stopping every three to four hours in that range uh, and letting the horse rest just by stopping uh, so the trailer's not moving the vibrations have gone away they can just kind of relax it is probably reasonable I, a lot of times people are really worried about unloading their horses at the rest stop. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be really cautious with that because we know that from an injury standpoint that the two times that are the, have the highest incidence of causing a potential industry injury is getting off the trailer and getting back on. Yeah. So if we can minimize how much we do that, we can maybe stay away from that. Plus, the other thing is, is you could end, un, end up unloading in a place that's maybe not the most comfortable for the horse. And what if they decide that they're a little um, 
I'm not sure I want to get back on. Uh, it might be better to, to leave them on and get to your destination so that you can actually truly deal with the horse and manage them appropriately, but stop every three to four hours and probably try to be at your destination in that 10, 11, 12 hours. And, and when you stop, uh, you're probably looking at a 30 minute rest break. Yeah. And, and think, think of it in the standpoint, I mean, we all know that if we do lots of long distance driving and, and there are people out there that'll tell you that they can drive for six or eight hours without having to stop. Well, maybe, uh, but if you think about it, we're a lot better off personally if we stop every three to four hours, get up, stretch, do that sort of thing, and just take a break. You end up at the end because even though, you know, just drove, why can I be so tired after 12 hours of driving? Well, it's because it's hard work. Yeah. yeah. I know you're sitting, but it's hard work and it will tire you out. Think about you're sitting and it's hard work. Well, Nelly's in the back standing up. Yeah. And it's really hard work. So, let them rest, uh, and if you have to get them off, make sure you get them off in a place where it is safe and that you know or you're pretty confident that they're going to get back on. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned that that unloading and loading is a place to get injured, and also I see people that seem to be uh, worried about getting injured in the trailers. Uh, you see horses with eye protection, leg wraps, boots, um, tail wraps, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, tell us what we need, what might just be marketing, what might just be you over worrying. Talk about that some. <laughs> There's probably a little bit of all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is personal preference. People like to have leg wraps on and probably the the best thing that's come out of from an industry standpoint is the uh, the shipping boots. Yeah. Because they're pretty easy to put on and sort of I'm thinking along the lines that they're easy to put on so you're less likely to make a mistake. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of the uh, shipping companies, if you put leg wraps on, like polos or standing wraps, uh, and if they come loose, they will take them off, but they will not put them back on. Mm -hmm. they, they won't take that liability. And and you see a lot of people haul. Uh, probably the biggest thing that if you were worried about horses scrambling in the trailer and needing protection, would my guess would probably be bell boots. Yeah. You know, because because where are they going to step? They're going to step on a corner. They're going to step on a heel. So mm. probably bell boots might be when you really thought about it. Maybe that's the best. Um, the other stuff, I guess if you've got a horse that really wants to rub his tail and, and it's a show horse and you don't want him to be disfigured by the time he gets there, maybe a tail wrap. But with any of the protection you're going to put on, make sure it's on right. Yeah. Uh, that it's not, not on too tight, not on too loose. I mean, <clears throat> and the other thing with some of the leg wraps that people need to think about is if you've got a lot of bedding in there, sawdust, that sort of stuff. And if it gets stirred up in any, for any reason, and it gets between that horse's leg and the wrap, that's going to be pretty uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and it's going to get itchy. And we do know that there's some concerns about how much warmer that part of the horse is underneath the leg wrap. Yeah. So uh, I know lots of people that haul horses all over the place. Uh, the horses are, are pretty good travelers. I think they're pretty good travelers because the person in the truck is a pretty good driver. Yeah. Uh, and is pretty careful. Uh, but, a, you know, a two hour ride, if, how much do they need? I, it really depends on your horse. And I think it really comes back to the one thing is that they're trained to get on and off the trailer. Uh, that, that we spend some time doing that. I mean, it's a, it, Again, it becomes one of those necessary skills that horses should have. You know, absolutely. We, we know they'll lead. Well, that's good. We know they'll walk, trot, and canter, maybe. Uh, turn left, turn right. Well, they also need to get on and off the trailer properly and comfortably. Uh, I remember doing a, a program 
And uh, it was really interesting that Gal that was helping me brought her two horses in two different trailers. So we had a step up trailer and a ramp. And her one horse had never been on a ramp, ever. So she walked up into that trailer just as happy as can be. When it's time to unload, this horse was looking for the, trying to feel the ground. And it wasn't coming. And it was like, I'm backing up. I'm supposed to be able to step down. I mean, you could just see it in her body that it was like, this is not what I'm used to. And it was yeah. like, and we were able to point that out to the people. It's like, see, yeah. a great loader. Let's put her back in the, the one without the ramp and just watch her step up and step down. I mean, she was told to back and she walked out because she was trained to back out of the trailer. So that's probably the, you know, the, the two things I think, Gary, that are most important. Make sure that that truck and trailer matches and is proper and make sure the horse knows how to get in and out. And then the third thing is you need to know how to drive it. Yeah, for sure. I, that's something that we could talk on, I'm sure, for a long yeah. time about not slinging around curves and not, you know, easy on the brake and easy on the accelerator as we stop and take off and that kind of thing, for sure. And, and watch everybody around you because yeah. we all know that a lot of people, when they change lanes, all of a sudden they're going to duck in in front of you and or the ones that that always get me or you know they get in front of you when you're kind of rolling down the hill because you're just looking for that momentum to help you get up the other side without having to you know accelerate and jerk the trailer but you want to just roll back up and they pull back in front of that truck and trailer and then slow down yeah absolutely. you know and then you see the brake lights come on and it's like now you know that horse has had to yeah. change and do something and it's like People, people around you don't understand. So that means you have to be extra vigilant and pay attention. For sure. And, and, and so that, so you get where you're going and, and you got a horse that's not worn out because that's of right. the drive. That's right. Absolutely. When we think about hauling horses and, and what we need to accommodate the horses in the trailer, you know, to make sure that they're comfortable. I see, and I personally use a hay bag in a trailer to keep those horses, you know, on their regular schedule of eating and, and, you know, not try to throw them into any, you know, kiltered off of what they're used to. So talk to us about maybe feed and water and while we're trailering and that kind of thing. Well, like you, I, I think having some hay in front of them. So it just adds to some comfort. Um, probably need to make sure that it's not in the direct line of where air is coming in and you're blowing hay chaff all over that poor horse's face and they can't get away from it. Uh, but staying on schedule is pretty important. And so in a lot of cases, depending on what you're doing, if you know if we could feed and water on normal before we, we load up to go where we're going and, and having some hay for them, probably not a big fan of feeding grain in the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's something certainly not when it's moving uh you know horses are trying to chew and swallow and and all of a sudden if we uh, cause them to lose their balance or have to adjust i mean while they're taking a swallow it's a good time to get a horse to choke and uh you might not know that that's what's going on in the back of the trailer and mm -hmm. uh, we can be in pretty tough shape by the time we get stopped so having some hay and then that every three to four hours. I mean, have some water and, and it would be great if you're going on a long trip to go somewhere and it's going to be in a different place. We can get water sources, water receptacles that will fit in the back of our truck. We can get them that will fit in the trailer. Probably take a little bit of water that the horses are used to. Yeah. Even if it's for that, you know, it's going to be a eight or nine hour trip. At least if we know we can water them at four hours. If they want to drink, they're going to drink something that they're used to. Uh, we, we've all been on those trips and we've stopped to get water at a, or get, you know, have lunch at the restaurant. And, you know, the water's not quite what we're used to. And the, the coffee tastes real funny because the water's really different. Uh, so yeah. we're, we're making that decision not to. Well, so is our horse. And it's pretty important that they 
as you said, stay on schedule. So taking, if you could take some water that they're used to, that would be great. Uh, a lot of people, if they know they're going, they might flavor the water for mm -hmm. four or five days before they go. And so you just flavor that odd water and the horses will accept the, what they're used to. Uh, that, that can certainly make some difference, uh, mostly on the long hauls. If, if we're just going for, you know, two hours down the road to go to a trail ride, uh, we could probably get away with it a little easier, but I still like having the hay there for them, uh, having them so they can move their head if they need to put it down a little bit so they can clear their airways. That's, that's really happy, you know, helpful. Um, there are people, and I know some people will look at them and say, I can't believe it. That horse is traveling in that trailer and he's not tied. Yeah. Uh, most times you'll see that if they're not tied, they'll also be facing backwards. Mm -hmm. If they can, if they can turn around so that their butts that go in the direction of the vehicle, it's easier for them to balance because it also allows them to, to do a better job of carrying the weight on their front end. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be hard on those horses traveling. I mean, it it's hard work standing up in a, in a entity that's moving yeah and so we need to think about it, and even to the point where you know we've been on a long trail ride yeah and they're tired well now we're going to put them in the trailer and we're going to tire them out even more and then we wonder why they're stiff and sore the next morning when we go out to feed us because they're tired um they worked really hard on the trail ride they also had the two-hour ride there and the two-hour ride home so uh, it wasn't just the, the four hour trail ride. It was eight hours of work. Yeah. And we know what we're like when we have to work eight hours. Sure. And so we just need to think about it and do the best we can. If, if I'm leaving the trail ride and it's time that normally I'd be feeding grain, I'm, I might feed a little grain and I'm going to wait and give them a little time. I'm going to rest up from the trail ride, put everything away, maybe have a bite to eat and then go once they've had a chance to recover from the, the day's activities and then go home because we we do know that they, you know, we worry about them in the trailer. If there's some opportunity for them to hurt themselves, it might be as much due to the fact that they're just tired. Yeah. Because if we, if we watch performance horses, when are they most likely to take a misstep? It's at the end of an activity when they are probably a little tired. So. I was thinking you mentioned it just a minute ago, and I wanted to touch on it just a little bit more of something that you mentioned is that I was actually reading a post from a popular horse magazine last night and saw that they were talking about tying the horse. They had seven tips for hauling your horse. And I saw the part about tying them and making sure that they had enough rope that they could, you know, put their head down if they need to clear their airways. And, you know, the fact of, I know people that haul their horses untied. I've hauled horses untied. I always try to make sure that they've got plenty of room that they can get their head down, you know, make sure that they can't get their foot over the rope, but make sure that if they need to put their head straight out and put it down, that they can do that. I mean, I think that that's good advice. I think it really is. And, and uh, you know, some of those trailer ties are probably a little short. Yeah. You know, so I, I would think that if, you're right. I mean, we don't want it to get over their head and we don't want them to get a leg over it, but, but give them an opportunity. Cause the other thing is they're going to use their head and neck to help balance themselves. Right. And so, so give them a little bit of that. And, and it is interesting. I've watched and I've hauled horses like you. Uh, and every now and then you'll see one and they'll be in the trailer loose and heck the saddle will be on. Yep. <laughs> and uh, some people look at that and go, Oh, you know, you can't be doing that. And it's like, if they're in that end of the stock trailer by themselves, uh, they'll probably be okay. And they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, yeah. they're, they're pretty smart. The other thing that I think a lot of times people will look at is, you know, which direction should they travel? Uh, we hear all of that. Well, yeah. you know, they like to face backwards, but if you go to any of the trailer manufacturers, the only way you can get a trailer where the horse might be able to face backwards a little bit more is if you custom order it. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to 
certainly change the price of your trailer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and it takes a lot to do that because you know you got to change where the where they get on and get off. And I mean it's it's quite amazing, but you know you'll see if you give horses some amount of room for their feet. But you know I've seen lots of horses side by side, maybe head to tail, uh, no dividers. And they get along just fine because because they're used to traveling that way. They're used to being close. And sometimes it's if you have them close enough, they can't get into trouble. It's when they have a little too much room. Yeah. That that's when they get into trouble. So, you know, we we see other classes of livestock haul loose. We don't I don't think we tie very many cows up. No. And uh, you watch, they figure out where to stand. They figure out how to get along with each other and it goes well. And so I think sometimes we get overprotective. Uh, we, we have to pad them all up because they might step on themselves. Maybe you need to think about your driving. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you need to think about that just a little bit. Um, the other thing that I think a lot of people need to consider is who goes where in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, where where does that you know where does your gelding like to ride versus where does your mare like to ride uh no different than us some people don't like sitting in the back seat because they get car sick well maybe your horse is more comfortable at the front or maybe he's more comfortable at the back mm -hmm. uh there's there's a lot of things that that people worry about uh and and it's not to say that they shouldn't but i think keep it in perspective uh Spend some time just planning out what you're going to do, planning out where you're going to go, uh, prepare, and, and it should be a lot easier than this. We, you know, horses shouldn't be so afraid to go riding with us in the trailer. I think uh, I'm going to use, I've, I've done several uh, podcasts with you, and I think it always comes down to one statement at the end is that uh, practice with your horse. And yep. I think we need to practice loading and unloading and hauling. I've hauled some young horses that sound like that they're tearing the trailer apart when you first put them in there and haul them down the road. So, you know, getting them used to standing in that trailer and finding their balance and practicing with them before we do a lot, I think is a, is a really good advice on that. Such a simple thing. It is. It is for sure. All, all part of being a horseman. That's right. Any other words of advice for us before we go today, Dr. Bob? Just think about it, and, and when you go, have a nice ride. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Bob. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Rock Ag Podcast. If you have any questions about any of the content of this podcast, please call your local extension office. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share our podcast.